survey by uh, the U.S. Census Bureau has just come out. Oh, like real legit. And in the top 10 in terms of coupled LGBT, New York didn't make the list, Chicago didn't make the list, and Los Angeles didn't make the list. For real? Wow, that? that's surprising. Yeah. But guess who did make the list? Go yeah, go for it. Hey. Same sex couples, hello. All right, yes. this is going to be fun. We're this going to be talk fun. about a lot of interesting things. Four. Well, good evening, America, and welcome to It's Happening Out, the world's most popular live gay television talk show. You know the drill. It's 8 p.m. Wednesday, and it's March I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson. So let's start by meeting tonight's host on It's Happening Out. First up, this is Power Infinity, an original host here on It's Happening Out. Power is a diva. You can insert other words there from my <laughs> perspective. He's a DJ and is the creator of Tampa Bay's largest talent contest, Queen of the Night. He is also the host of the television show Infinity, T-E-A, broadcasting live on Facebook, and is one of the greatest LGBTQ political liberal voices in America. Welcome, Power. And he's also pretty. Um, <laughs> hey, welcome, <laughs> Alan. The rest well, of the crew. Yeah, we're going to debate that later. Uh, next up is Tony Lima. He is the Chief Operating Officer of Ariana Center, Trans Latina, Florida, one of America's most important LGBTQ trans rights 501c3 nonprofits in America. He is also a longtime South Florida LGBTQ activist, advocate, and political operative. Welcome, Tony. Hey, Al, thank you for having me as usual. Although from virtual space today, I'm super excited to be on with all of you. And uh, production's going to work on you because we have just a little bit of a lag delay uh, for you. Next up, welcome Faye. What? She's a radio personality, has a popular blog and YouTube channel called Faye. What? How many times do I have to say what? Uh, she's the anchor of Unity Coalition's streaming show, UCTV, brand new, and is also the anchor of the new travel news show, Happening Out Travel, uh, and that show. Uh, welcome, Faye. Hi, everyone. Do you love my bear mask? Pride Fort Lauderdale. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah. All right. I and, am a bear. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll debate that later, too. Uh, next, welcome drag queen Rihanna Patron. She is the dancing diva of the Palm Beaches and was voted 2020 Best Drag Queen by South Florida Gay News. She hosts Work It Wednesdays at Lake Worth at Propaganda and a variety game show Sundays at Penny's at the Duke in Lantana. Welcome back, Rihanna. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm back. I love your mask. Here and queer. That's, that is so cool. Uh, next, welcome Misty Eyes. She is the director of transgender services for SunServe, one of South Florida's most respected LGBTQ nonprofits serving our LGBTQ community. She is a highly celebrated and award winning entertainer, MC, journalist, drag queen. She pays me $10 for every <laughs> that I put in there and has been featured in many media outlets, including the New York Times and Sunny.org's tourism campaign. Welcome back, Misty. Thank you guys so much. It's a pleasure to be back. We are on spring break right now, so I'm not like stuck in homework hell. And you're you're raising money for? Yes, I am raising money. The AIDS walk is coming up next month. And please feel free to donate to sunserve.org forward slash Misty to help SunServe, in, in my name, raise money for SunServe. That's right. And remember, uh, donate to uh, Misty and SunServe because AHF generously is doing buy one, get one free. Match, matching yeah. every dollar that you contribute to SunServe and to Misty. Uh, next up is Gordon Woodworth III. They identify as a pagan and is genderqueer, non-binary, Gen Zer. He's the youngest person on the panel. He paid Boy. $25 to say that. <laughs> and is a data entry and triage specialist at the nonprofit organization Broward House, one of the nation's top HIV services providers. They are now also uh, running an alt space VR event series called Pagans in Virtual Reality. Welcome back, Gordon. Thanks, Al. It's not hard to be the youngest panel, uh, youngest in the panel with this group. <laughs> All right. All this right, there, Gordon. I'll oh. take my $10 now. 
<laughs> but it's hard to look the youngest. Yeah. Ooh, that part. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gordon kind of brought the show to a stop there for a second. Now I've regained my composure and let's move on. Uh, So good evening, America. We are the first and most popular live LGBTQ talk show in the world. So much to talk about next on It's Happening Out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. Well, we begin tonight with Happening Now breaking news. The new U.S. Census Bureau report tells us where LGBTQ lives and what cities are gay. Once known for singer Anita Bryant's anti-gay rights campaign and a ban on gay and lesbian adoptions, Florida is now home to two metro areas with the highest concentrations of gay and lesbian coupled households in the United States, according to the brand new report released by the U.S. Census Bureau. Orlando and Miami had the fourth and sixth highest percentages, respectively, of same-sex coupled households in the U.S. San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle topped the list. Austin was number five. Boston came in at number seven. But surprisingly, they were joined in the top ten by some uh, unexpected metro areas, including Baltimore, Denver, and Phoenix. Noticeably absent were three of the nation's largest metros, New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, though they have some of the nation's most visible LGBTQ communities, the vastness of their metro areas dilutes the concentration. San Francisco had the highest percentage at 2.8%. To make the top 10, you had to be at least 2%. Interesting, the Census Bureau categorized Washington, D.C. as a state so it was not considered as a metro area. But D.C. is actually by far the gayest place in America, with 7.1% of the population of coupled gays in that city. Also interesting, the U.S. Census data indicates that Florida has the highest concentration of LGBTQ same-sex households in America and is one of the fastest growing states for LGBTQ community in the nation. What do y'all think about the new census data that has just been released? Well, first of all, we need to change. uh, Apparently, we're going to have to change our branding because we have always bragged that we were uh, broadcasting from the gayest place on earth. Apparently, that's not true. So um, (laughs) that census just made a liar out of us. Always fact checking. Exactly right. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm actually, you know, I'm I'm actually surprised when it comes to Florida because I always say if it's buffoonery, it's Florida. And, um, (laughs) you know, Surprisingly enough, for all the bad that Florida has, for all the foolishness that Florida has, Florida is pretty progressive when it comes to um, LGBT rights in this in in this country. You know, we were first we we um, granted um, gay marriage before uh, the nation did. Um, just recently, we passed a um, sweeping you know LGBT pro LGBT um, legislation. And apparently we are, you know, number one when it comes to, um, to coupling, you know, gay couples here in, in uh, the United States. So, you know, Florida, I guess we can give Florida a, a round of applause when it comes to that. I was surprised that a lot of other cities weren't on there. Like I've lived in predominantly gay areas. I lived in Twin, Twin Peaks, San Francisco, Castro, San Francisco, The Village, New York, uh, Manhattan itself, South Beach back when it was gay. You know, so I've like like lived in all these cities and a lot of those cities weren't even on the, on the list. What got me also was DC, our capital, has so many gay people. I had no idea. And they were all hanging out with Trump for four years. Yeah, let's Holy hope crap. Uh, right, that's the joke. Let's hope they're not members of gays for Trump or the log cabin Republicans. I want to know who's coupling because I'm not coupled yet. (laughs) I'm coupled. That's honestly what I wanted to point out because I feel like this says more about the socioeconomic status of gay people around the country than it does about the community itself because this is talking strictly about people who are married and cohabitating 
and a lot of the gay community exists outside of that structure. Mm -hmm. So this really doesn't give us a good picture. I, I have to, uh, I apologize, Gordon, if I was interrupting you there, but there's the impact of the study. Gordon gets to it in a different way. If what Gordon just said is true, and perhaps it is, uh, it is also the determining factor of the importance of this Census Bureau, because this statistic is what uh, the government, what businesses, what advertisers will make decisions on mm -hmm. in terms of where they spend their money, where health care will be dedicated, and where they will fish for the most valuable consumers, which are among LGBT. So Gordon's observation, I just make the note to you, uh, is still a good one for the LGBTQ community because Florida, for example, will be a place that national and international advertisers go after because of the richness of LGBTQ consumers that show up in this new census. Survey. Piggybacking on that point, Al, they left the T out of the equation because I am legally a woman and I'm married to a man and on the census, I'm a heterosexual couple. So they did not even count the T's in same sex coupling they for the census data. Right so I, I have a question for Misty. Um, do you, they didn't count the T in this, in the census data, but do you look forward to a time where they wouldn't even have to count the T when uh, trans, we wouldn't even have to use the label trans when it comes to trans women? Or do you think that that label is still important for visibility's sake? Just asking. Oh, you're asking a double-edged sword question. I see both sides of that coin power very well. I see the utopia where we are just human beings and gender's a non-issue, period. There's so many mm -hmm. non-binary gender queer kids that are coming up and don't identify as male or female right now today. So mm -hmm. that would be an ideal situation. However, our visibility gives us power. And so that mm -hmm. labeling and that exposure gives us power. Like icons like Janet Mock, for example, who was stealth and lived under the radar as a, as a woman. And then later she came out as a trans person and that became a huge ally, not an ally, but an activist for our community. So mm -hmm. I see both sides. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, yeah. Before we move on, any, uh, any final thoughts anyone has? Gordon. I just wanted to piggyback off that because I'm the other member of the trans community on this panel. And I think that we're going to keep the labels as long as we need them. And then after that, maybe hopefully they'll go away and we'll be in the utopia like Misty is describing. Well, the, the wow. U.S. Census report is, is super interesting in terms of where it's a reflection, especially as Power noted, uh, the Washington, D.C. numbers were astounding. More people in Washington, D.C. by percentage than San Francisco, which has always been considered Mecca one. Washington, D.C. is also number one for HIV, also number one for syphilis, also number one for gonorrhea and also number one for chlamydia I, I, and by the way i've got the washington oh, wow. and visitors true. bureau on the phone right now and they're going i'm back. serious <laughs> no, but I guess don't. who's number two in our country <laughs> for HIV infection yeah all right south florida let's let's move out of our uh, uh breaking uh, now uh, and remind you that you're watching a live and unedited <laughs> lgbtq talk show so anything can happen if you're on youtube make sure you subscribe and click the bell for updates if you're on facebook like us and share the video and start a watch party it's super easy let's begin tonight with a unique meme of the week it's called when there is news you ready over another new RuPaul's Drag Race. Let's look at the meme. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, there isn't. <laughs> yes! yes. Did he? No? Now I'm watching he said Power's no. face as it dawns on him. Wait, did he do this for me? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Nobody gives <laughs> Tony just got high <laughs> what, what do you think? Yeah, he did. Yeah, and, and, to and Tony hates it. What do y'all think? Uh, what do you think about our meme of the week? <laughs> Nothing. Nobody thinks anything. No it's one's gonna, gonna let that go. Nobody I mean, has any thoughts. I'm gasped. <laughs> I love drag. Obviously, I've been a drag queen for 23 years. I love drag. I love RuPaul's Drag Race. But I don't care there's a new Amsterdam drag race. I don't care there's a new Canada drag race. I don't care there's a new From Down Under drag race. I don't, I don't care. Is there? Honestly, until I, that I show think our actually... Viewers, I th Go ahead. Go ahead, child. I was going to say, <laughs> until that show actually represents drag and stops point, painting it as female illusion and actually uh, makes the show uh, audience gay people and not mainstream straight people, I don't care either. 
Well, I think our audience pretty much knows my indifference when it comes to RuPaul's Drag Race. So if that that word, if, you indifference. Indifference, indifference. It means, <laughs> means you can care less one way or another. So if that meme was, uh, was um, featuring me, instead of me shaking my head, I would have just been like, you know, yawn. <laughs> what do you think about you being compared to a goldfish? <laughs> Gold diggers more like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, Misty. <laughs> Misty said it. <laughs> Misty be knowing. Misty be knowing. All right, there we go. She yeah, knows all the tea tonight. I've known her for a long time, honey. It ain't shade of it's the truth. Girl. That's right. We have watched enough Shag Mary Chops to know. Yeah, it's a funny joke still. All right. Well, speaking of that, who needs a drink? Let's play our game of yes or no called I'd Swallow That. We invite you to play at home right along with us as I ask our host four questions. Uh, agree with the question, and they're going to take a shot. I have one right in front of me. Disagree, and, well, it's going to be a long night. Uh, everybody ready? Ready. Yeah. Well, no, I, can't get it I, got, I got my shot. And there you go. You know, I want to see you down it. Then let's play I'd Swallow That. Question number one. I'd Swallow That. A new Reese's Peanut Butter Cup without chocolate is anti-diversity. Anti-diversity. What? Huh? No. What the is, hell is that? Okay, wait, no. I'm Power all about it. laughed and got the joke. I love peanut butter. <laughs> I'm super confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about a peanut butter peanut butter cup, but it's I don't think racist. it's anti-diversity. <laughs> exactly, that's what I Is it supposed to have like a hidden meaning? I don't think it's racist to have a peanut butter Power, peanut butter. Uh, effective immediately. Only you and I are going to do the rest of the show. Everyone else be silent for the whole rest of the show. It's almost like it's a drink. The, uh, the, the idea here is Reese's has created a white peanut butter cup. That's not white. That's, not white. That's, That's brown. Peanut butter cup. That's a Latino cup. That, exactly. Tony, cup. tell us what Puerto you Rican think, cup. Tony. A Puerto Rican cup right I there. think it's a Latino cup, too. Thank I'm thinking this whole Latino Thank cup you. thing. Yeah. yeah, I'm still trying to figure out this technology, people. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I was in the studio know, with you, but I'm just I know, saying. girl. We, we, we don't see more of your palm in this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you I, sure that's I, his palm? I really thought that was his right. I, I thought that was his all right. I, I'm, I'm moving on. All right. Uh, question I'm drinking, number though. one, apparently power for you and I didn't land as well as we thought the conversation would be. So let's move on to question number it's two. Orange. I'd swallow that. Now we're going to stay in the food category. Oh, Lord. I love Oreos removing the white, replacing it with color. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll definitely go with that one. Now, do you get it in reverse? Haha, ha, you're hilarious, Al. If they start making these, they better have them because I couldn't find those Lady Gaga Oreos. I anywhere. couldn't find them either. I couldn't either. By the way, I love that they went red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then added a pink for trans the people. Pink. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Exactly. And, and did everybody see, we reported it on Q, did everybody see uh, Oreos' statement? Uh, uh, what was the exact word? Trans people exist. Yeah, trans. <laughs> Newsflash. Oh, I love that. We're not a figment of your imagination. A Twitter statement. That's it. That's, That's all it. they said. Well, they the, most important quest the most important question about those Oreo cookies are, do they taste good? I mean, uh, do they taste Do they good change the flavor? You... It doesn't yeah, change, change the flavor, flavor at all. Nope. It's just oh, okay. Flavor. It doesn't taste like a gay boy power. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry, Poppy. It does I'll not. take the Twink Boy bottom cookie. <laughs> Lies. All right. Question number Masculine three. Verse for me. <laughs> I'll take the total top. <laughs> Question number three. I'd swallow that. The anniversary. It's this week. This week. The anniversary of COVID nineteen lockdown is here. It's been the worst year of my life. Oh, I don't agree. Me either. Okay. I've had a worse oh, here. Yeah, I've had worse. I'm, yeah. I'm over here thirsty. Too. Less money, but I've I'm had over worse. here thirsty. I ain't drunk, drunk a lick since we started this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of the best. It's been one of the best for me. Uh, the end of this month is my first wedding anniversary. So, oh, congratulations! congratulations. Oh, congratulations. So, congratulations. and I started working at Broward House. So. And I didn't have to deal with people pretty much at all for a whole year, so it was pretty good, <laughs> despite the pandemic. Tony, we're loving you, by the way. Power is our. I am best. dying over here. I am dying. Yeah, <laughs> but you're here. perfect, just, just like that. Stay like that. We, we, we died. We died. He's got a big tall. Got it. 
let's, let's come to <laughs> Thank COVID. Thank you, Power. Uh, we, Thank for you those, for your support. For those, <laughs> right? For those people that didn't drink, uh, the last year um, has been okay for you. We heard what Gordon just said. It's been, it's been all right. It's been okay. I mean, with the, with the exception of losing money as an entertainer that I do for a living. Other than that, but I mean, I've gotten a chance to be home with my dogs for almost a year. I'm not like running out the house, running to the next gig, running home, running to the next gig. It's been a little more calm, but um, obviously it's been a tough year for myself and for everybody, but definitely not the worst year. <laughs> no, yeah, um, I, wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's the worst year. I mean, it was, it was good all things considering. And, you know, I think it's very important for us to concentrate on giving thanks for the things that we have instead of wallowing in the things that we don't. We are all here. I, hear I definitely that. reconnected with a lot of friends that I don't, I don't always get to see all the time. So it was really nice to reconnect with people. You know, we're not talking uh, much about COVID in the show tonight, but we have to draw attention to the fact that the president has moved up. There's enough vaccine, uh, vaccines for all Americans two months earlier than originally promised. That's it's going awesome. to be uh, May. <laughs> now, delivery has to take place, but we're moving literally at warp speed yeah. for a vaccine. Not here in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. You, if you think about March of where we were one year ago in terms of the impending tidal wave that was getting ready to hit our country, we've spent seven trillion dollars. Seven trillion dollars. Our children's children are going to be paying for what's happened in the last year. Yeah. For us to have a vaccine, for us to have a second vaccine, for us to have a third vaccine, and a for him to implement the Defense Initiative Act and make or encourage, whichever word you want, Merck and Johnson & Johnson to work together to move it even faster, which is an example of, imagine the president going to Coke, you've got to make Pepsi now. That's what the Merck and Johnson & Johnson deal is in his announcement. There's Power's point in terms of you look at the positive. Let's move on. Question number four, I'd swallow that. I want to be like Chelsea Handler as she announced that she celebrated her birthday by skiing down a naked yeah. she skiing Whoa, down the mountain Chelsea. naked. Down. She's not naked. That's topless. Yeah, she's got underwear on. Yeah, there's no I've done worse on Hallover. Uh, <laughs> but have you done I, that I just don't ice. understand the point. I don't understand the point of it, though. So like, do it then, Tony, okay. your next birthday. No, she's going to need new nipples. Yeah, but Tony topless is not scandalous. I, Not I, for I, her, I, anyway. Thank you, it is requested, though. <laughs> thank you. I've seen her naked in her pool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, interesting of Chelsea Handler. That's really interesting. I wonder, I wonder, listen, I feel like Power said something earlier that really struck a chord with me because it's absolutely true. On cue, we've been talking, I've specifically been talking about every week how we need to be really positive, how we have to look at... Um, the, the, the bright side of things, how we have to be supportive of each other. I feel like Chelsea Handler, like find something that's going to be wonderful for the community that surrounds you. And quite honestly, looking at your like naked boobies as you slide down a mountain does nothing for me. Really? She's trying to stay relevant. Yeah, that, I don't know how that would keep her relevant. Like, no, her people are talking pretty. about it. Now, how would, that like, have I mean, been, how would that have been for you if we replaced uh, uh, the model in the skis and it'd be Ricky Martin? I think I would need Tom Selleck to like regress and be 30 years old again and ski down the mountain with a mustache for me to even care. We're not talking about your fetishes. Too. Wow. We're... We can talk about that later. All right. All we right. can talk about fetishes. Yes. Thank done. you, Rihanna. All right. All right. Let's move on. Um, at It's Happening Out, we'd like to bring attention of the LGBTQ community. Oh, wow. to I didn't get to drink shit. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just drank my sauce right now. Oh, my God. I'm just like. Just the, it up. I was well, like, I'm going to turn my computer wait, off. If, if that's, the tr <laughs> if that's the truth. Just think back to your 90s days, and it'll fill you with inspiration. Um, uh, we have totally <laughs> Someone explain what 90s get back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were gay. The gay After 90s. The show, Gordon, we'll explain what the 90s <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, oh, no. We like to bring attention. I've got to get this back together. The LGBTQ <laughs> community to the best thing of the week. This week, it's called Ted Cruz Roasted because of the freeze and CPAC and just being Ted Cruz. Watch this. Who's 
flying and vacationing. It's been Ted Cruz all along. Rushing back and now he's pretending that he's been here all along. It was Ted Cruz. It was Teddy Cruz. It's been Ted Cruz all along. And I left my dog home too. <laughs> I'm loving some WandaVision. <laughs> what do y'all think? Ted Cruz. Uh, y'all know we're a live show, right? I love it. Right? <laughs> I, I'm hoping that the Republicans in Texas keep it up because this is going to push Texas to become a blue state and that could only be a good thing for all of us. I do want to address it because you mentioned CPAC in the intro because it's been in uh, social media a lot about how the stage was supposedly shaped like the rune for Odin and the I just want to give you all the official pagan response that is not what the rune looks like and please stop associating pagan people with white nationalists by the way I am from Alaska and Alaska is no stranger to blizzards no stranger to cold weather but however Texas <laughs> was not prepared for a blizzard and they were not prepared for cold weather I personally don't blame him for shipping his family to a warmer climate. Um, I am shocked that he had the audacity to go himself. And he left his dog! Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's well, not acceptable. Well, hold, on. <laughs> hold on. If he had shipped his family to a warmer climate and it was just his family, it would not even have been a news story. True. Right. His ass ain't had no business being on that plane. He doesn't get to do that because he signed up. Right. He signed up for a, a, a specific job. He doesn't have the luxury of taking off. He has to stay there in the trenches and in the cold with everybody else. Then he comes back giving a pack of water. Almost as bad as Trump throwing out some uh, paper, paper, paper towels. towels. Paper paper towels. towels. Here, here you go, Puerto Rico. Well, he's the next so, Trump, yeah, guys. He's, he's late. He is so you, late. And you know so what tired. was the most offensive thing to me is Cruz and Howley trying to go, we're, we're the man of the people kind of thing. And uh, we're just average people. And Cruz and Hawley are um, Yale uh, and Dartmouth educated and Harvard Law School educated. And, and Ted Cruz goes off to Cancun. And where does he stay? Did he stay at the Holiday Inn? No. No, of course not. Rick no, of course. Carl. You know he gets paid, right? Come, come on. You He's got he, some coins, he, right? He stayed, at, he stayed at the Ritz Carlton. You know, I have to say, and and you guys can stay people, will not people will not believe this out there in, in our listening audience but this is the one time that i agree with trump it sure is the one time i agree with trump lion ted lion ted yeah well it's interesting he wants to run for president all right well and here we go yeah <laughs> it's best thing of the week i thought it was <sighs> all right next let's move on to our segment what's on your mind each host is going to tell us in just 30 seconds what is important to them this week but remember in just 30 seconds or you're going to hear this bell hear it all right here we go uh power infinity we'll start with you what's on your mind this week oh this is going to be really quick just want to stop by and say that i actually support the uh cancellation of six dr seuss books over racist imagery. That's all. Hmm. Okay. And Tony Lima, what's on your mind this week? So this week, I agree with you, Power, 100%. This week, I'm thinking about vaccines. And I know it's exciting that the president has taken this almost samurai kamikaze approach to try to get us all vaccinated. But the reality is that even with his best intentions, we still have to work with these vaccines being pushed into our local areas and the neediest people getting them. And I am a little bit incredulous at that actually going to happen. So I'm worried. I'm a little bit worried that not everyone that needs to be getting this vaccine is gonna get it soon enough. Thank you. And Faye, what? Faye, What's on what? your mind this week? It's about the only thing that's been on my mind. I was diagnosed with stage one cancer about a month ago. And on Monday, I'll be getting a surgery to get all that crap out of me. Mm. I will be okay. I won't be with you guys for a little bit. But I'm grateful that it was caught early. Women out there, get mammograms. Find it early, just like me, and live the life that you're supposed to. Faye, have you oh, wow. posted this publicly? I have not anywhere? said this, this publicly. This is the first time, this is the first time anybody's... Okay, uh, and I've yeah. known for quite a while, right away. I We've got it. you, Faye. And now, Faye gives me the opportunity uh, to say, all of us are completely with you. Uh, Faye is going to dinner tonight. We're going to celebrate. Tony, I'm sorry you're not here. 
Um, and, and anybody that would like to join us, we're going to Bubbles and Pearls, and we're having dinner, and we're celebrating Faye's uh, life and the long life and the wonderful experiences that she's going to have after Monday. And uh, Faye, uh, and the brand right. new titties, and, okay, the brand right. new titties, Faye, yeah. that we've been talking about every single day. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gagamated. I'm gagamated, but much love, and and um, you know, I have much, much, much love to you, Faye. Thank you. Thank Same you. here. Uh, we love you here, Faye. We we hope wish you all the best. Yeah. Thank you, Rihanna. Exactly. She's right. going to be and, fantastic. And Rihanna Patron, what's on your mind this week? Um, honestly, the stimulus. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be passed through the Senate, so I'm hoping that everybody gets the much-needed relief that they need. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. And Misty Eyes, what's on your mind? This well, week? now I'm thinking about the stimulus because I still didn't get my second stimulus yet. Um, but what I was going to say is I recently got some conspiracy theories that COVID was not real all along. And I'm like, hello, newsflash, the entire world shut down and people died. So I don't know how people can still live under a rock and believe these conspiracy theories that ludicrous things are not obvious. I don't know. I, it's, I'm just shocked. You know, I have, thank you. I have no time for idiocy. That's idiocy. And my answer to those people is Ron Brineski. Yeah. Always for the rest of my life say it. Correct. Uh, Gordon Woodworth III, what's on your mind this week? So I have been thinking a lot uh, because I'm a Unitarian Universalist. And at the end of this month, my congregation will be voting to approve the eighth principle of Unitarian Universalism, which is basically our principles are the things we all profess to believe because we're the church of all religions. And I'm going to read it directly. We, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. And after all this religion talk this week, there are churches out there that aren't doing this BS, and yeah. one of them is the UU Church. Excellent. All right. Next, let's catch up on the news from Hollywood and the world of entertainment. Uh, we call it Celebrity Hot Topic of the Week. Uh, our headline today is going back to the Golden Globes this week. Uh, and at the Golden Globes, Norman Lear reminds the LGBTQ community how much we owe him. During the 2021 <coughs> Golden Globes on Sunday, the prolific television writer and producer, 98 years old, was awarded the Carol Burnett Award. Lear's focus in the Golden Globes was especially impactful on the LGBTQ community. At the time of 1969 Stonewall riots and then the turbulent 1970s, Norman Lear was blazing trails with Archie Bunker, George Jefferson, Florida from Good Times, and of course, Maud. He challenged acceptance and rejection of the gay community, drag queens, racism, related black issues, sexism, and women's rights, including the right to abortion, and especially social justice being connected to economic justice. Lear said, quote, it was a calling for me to support diversity and the LGBTQ community from the beginning, end quote. And since the Stonewall riots of 1969, Norman Lear has been with us every step of the way. What do y'all think about what we watched at the Golden Globes with Norman Lear? How incredible. This trailblazer was so ahead of his time. Like, I wish we had like 30 more years with him. And unfortunately, he's 98. He's not going to be around too long, you know? But it's like, wow, I would love to see him do something with, with Shonda Rhimes. Or who's the gay boy that writes everything? What, what's his name? Ryan Todd Murphy. Murphy. Yes! Like, wouldn't that be oh, awesome? Man. I mean, come on, he was so oh, ahead of his time. I don't know. Yeah, I remember Power mentioning the Jeffersons a couple of weeks back, and then I started watching Jeffersons again. That stuff is hysterical still. I mean, you know, a little racist, but it's hysterical. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, um, you know, I, well, I didn't watch the Golden Globes, but, you know, Norman Lear is somebody that, like Faye said, has always been decades, decades ahead of his time. The things that he produced really, it was more impactful um, and more controversial then. I mean, now mm -hmm. we're still talking about these things, but we are more accepting and we've, we have a, a more open and diverse world. But back then it was not so. And yes, the, um, the programs that we watched like Archie Bunker, the Jeffersons, those programs tackled racism mm -hmm. and they tackled it without the same filter that we have. Like they could say the N word straight up, um, you know, we, where we can't. 
the shows were not racist, but they were very, they were based in reality and reality was dealing with racism at the time. And they, they really and authentically reflected that. So he is definitely somebody that has paved the way for many of us. They showed a, um, they showed a clip on Sunday that just left me breathless. Um, I had forgotten it. I had seen the, uh, the episode, but in one of uh, Lear's shows in the 70s on All in the Family, mm -hmm. uh, they were talking, mm -hmm. Archie Bunker was talking about, uh, there was a black man uh, and Archie Bunker and a Latino man. And he was talking to the Latino man and at, at one point in the little tirade that he was on, he turned to him and said, you're, not, you're a step below, I'm paraphrasing, the black man. And specifically mm -hmm. said, well, at least he's a black man. You're not even that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. If that was done today, there, to this morning on the, uh, on the Today Show, and all day long, it would have, you would have heard nothing but that on mm -hmm. some show last mm -hmm. night on NBC or ABC. And that's what uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something that might be controversial, but, you know, I don't care. But I, I really don't have a problem with shows that realistically show um racism or, or bigotry i don't have a show i have a problem with shows that glorify that mm -hmm. and make it seem like those that is right but when you are being realistic about what's going on like for example the movie 12 years a slave i'm not going to say you know people are going to say oh child well they showed that lady getting beat and yeah okay they were showing it what happened. happened back then if archie bunker was saying that he was a product of his time and that was being reflected in art um, and they were tackling an issue. So I don't have a problem with that. Now, a lot of people will go back and say, oh, child, let's cancel that. Let's cancel that. To me, I don't feel that shows like that should be canceled because shows like that really help to progress our society and make our world a better place, even if it was raw truth. Yeah. Yeah. Before we move on, any final thoughts? Well, and it wasn't just LGBT stuff that they showed. They showed women's rights. They had abortion um, episodes. They had things on drugs. I mean, he really covered so many things that there was were gays so and all taboo in the family for that too. time. Yeah, and All in the Family was really the whole point of Archie Bunker's character was to point out that this man is an idiot for yeah. believing. It was for him to right. tackle all of and those things. It, it made it, I think, especially for white people. I mean, in my family, it was certainly impactful. My grandparents watched All in the Family. My parents grew up watching it. It brought these conversations into white households that otherwise would not have been had at all. Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing, Al? I just want to add to that. What I love about these shows is that they serve to be, when I watch them now, they're like a time capsule for me, right? Of what was the reality back then in the 70s and the 80s and the late 60s, whatever the case may be. And I think they're important pieces of history. And another thing is that Norman Lear has inspired so many um, directors, producers, creative people like Shonda Rhimes and others like Ryan Murphy that we continue to watch today. So kudos. Yeah, like Family Guy. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Right, like Family Guy. Of or, course, the, of or, or The Simpsons. Uh, another example absolutely. of that tackle. I just want to point out, I saw this week uh, something uh, we really didn't talk very much about LGBT. Just one closing note and then we're going to move on. Uh, I was 13 years old and watched an episode of... Uh, uh, all in the family, which they brought back to my attention this week as an LGBT theme. Archie Bunker was, there was a storyline in 1973. Remember, this is just four years after Stonewall. Just four years after Stonewall. I'm 13 years old and I watch a show where Archie Bunker was attracted to this woman and this woman was in his house and sitting in Edith's chair. And the storyline of the controversy is, wait, this woman is in Archie's house sitting in Edith's chair. And the big reveal moment is she takes her wig off and it's a drag queen mm -hmm. in 1973. You can't get in. I'm going to go look up that episode nope. now. I saw that episode. I'm going to find that episode. I remember that episode too. <laughs> Any more spectacular than that. All right, well, that's our discussion on the entertainment that we watched this week uh, with Norman Lear. And we owe you a lot. 
If it's not said enough in the LGBTQ mm -hmm. community, we owe you a lot. Thank you. Next, we are reporting at Happening Out Television Network. Uh, we support our LGBTQ community. An example is here at Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. We are broadcasting at this moment from our permanent set in supporting that partnership. The network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ religious affirming broadcast in the world with more than 30,000 watching every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and it's totally live. We encourage you to tune in. Our campaign of sponsorship proudly supports Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this. This is Mo Lurito, local law enforcement in South Florida, and Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Well, we'd also like to thank our set designer, Concepto Modern Living, here in Fort Lauderdale for making this set in this amazing queer church campus possible. And finally, we'd like to thank Happening Out Hotel sponsor, Best Western I-95 Fort Lauderdale. This is the closest and best choice to the famous Wilton Drive and our host and guest stay at this LGBTQ ally partner. We encourage you to stay here when visiting South Florida. Up next, if we were standing around the LGBTQ water cooler, this is what we would all be talking about. And we're doing a little change, and the hosts don't know about this. Uh, we were planning to talk about something else in our main topic uh, about the Reverse uh, Equality Act. And uh, we're suspending that because we thought we would do a gay culture uh, main topic this week. So all of the hosts are learning of this live as we speak. Everyone that has been in a gay bar, raise your hand. Raise your hand right now. Everyone that has got drunk in a gay bar, raise your hand again. <laughs> Everyone that has got me. drunk in a gay bar and then did something got high. stupid afterwards, raise your hand. Okay. Got high. <laughs> right. All right. Well, while our LGBTQ watering holes are endangered, and we are apparently doing fundraisers in pandemic to save our favorite bars, it is undeniable that the LGBTQ bar has been a staple of LGBTQ uh, life. Uh, let's face it, the gay riots, trans rights, black gay rights movement all launched from a gay bar in 1969 called Stonewall. So with all of that in mind, have you ever wondered what the person across the bar, you know, the server, the bartender, the therapist, the social guru, whatever you want to call him or her, is thinking about you? Have you ever wondered when you order a drink that the bartender keeps sizing you up based on what you order at the bar? So when bartender and tip Talk user at Donny Ani shared the industry secrets of what the drink you order at the gay club says about you. Okay, it's happening out, takes the bait. Now we're going to show you about two minutes of his definitions of different drinks. See if you catch your drink and what it says <laughs> about you from an expert. Why? <laughs> Guys, I used to bartend at the gay club, and uh, this is what your drink says about you. First up, we have vodka soda. Uh, we already knew you were gay, but now we know you douche before you came. Catch me in the bathroom stall, how about that? Splash of crayon lets me know that you have a much more refined palate than your other sisters. Like a Red Bull, because the bump you did in the bathroom just didn't quite do it for you. Cranberry, you're definitely the target audience for the Chromatica Oreos. Like a Sprite, you're here with your bitchy vodka soda friend, but you don't want them to know you're having fun. Like water, I can just 
feel the self-hate. I get sour, you're probably not old enough to like whiskey and they missed your fake at the door. Shots of vodka because tequila is yucky. Oh, you're out here to let these bottoms know. Listen to me right now, if you're carrying a vodka soda, you are not safe around a rum and coke queen. I came here for one thing and they will stop at nothing to get a diet coke because she's a skinny girl. So little. She said, I had enough of my inner demons. It's time for them to be everyone else's problem. Malibu pineapple, um, if you forgot your sippy cup, I, I have a few extra in the back. Uh, this is the level of delusional we all aspire to be. You're out here in the trenches living your best island getaway fantasy. Work. If you know, you know. That's it. Shots of patrol. Oh, sorry. No, 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 sorry. Shots of patrol. Oh, it's okay. I love big groups of straight girls. If YOLO were a drink, you measure the success of a night by whether or not you black out. I definitely know you by name at the hospital. Ooh, an intellectual. So unique and refined. T minus 10 minutes until you lose all control of your muscle movement. <sighs> Make sure you don't drop your life alert bracelet. It gets dark in here. Make sure you want to drop your social security check on these go-go boys. Dory Sour, you either have a sugar daddy or you're looking for one. You're obviously not here to get drunk. Oh, uh, you really want to see me sweat. This is probably the only drink you know. Change can be scary, I understand. A sadist. I don't have the time or resources to make you a good Manhattan in a nightclub. That's okay, your goal was to be dissatisfied. Tequila soda, the play cousin of the vodka soda gay. A little dumber, a lot more fun. Tequila sunrise, because you want everyone to know astrology is your personality. Tennessee pineapple, your friends definitely have you on a leash. Garita, you started twerking before you even took a sip. Security! The only thing you hear more than that is you're cut off. Well, guys, it's fun being gay. Make sure you try it out. Listen, baby, high school was a tough time for all of us, but you gotta let it go at some point. Thank you so much, guys. If you didn't see your drink in parts one, two, three, or four, it means I'm in love with you. Come kiss. First <laughs> off, Donny Ani, I have never dropped my life alert, and I have never put a social security check on the bar when I've ordered my martini. Damn it. Uh, Mine wasn't damn. even on there. Damn. <laughs> what did y'all think? What does it say about us? That gay bars are, are can frequently be our church, and bartenders Therapy. judging us based on what kind of drink we order. So is this the new astrology of the gay community? <laughs> I guess. That's what it sounds like. Isn't that the tequila sunrise? What do you drink, Gordon? <laughs> okay, so if I'm, it depends on what kind of bar it's it is. It's definitely um, not a bar. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Only if there's a deal where you can get a bucket of them, then I'll drink that. <laughs> but usually it's a gin and tonic for gin me. Tonic, okay. but refined. But I also You're have refined. a run and coke. Or I do like to get martinis too, so I don't know. I felt like wow. that didn't You're really... putting the definition of virtual into play. Oh, yeah. and, and versatile. I, not versatile. Right? I do order old yeah. fashions too, but not every bar knows how to make it. Nobody has so. bitters to do that. Are you crazy? Like, come on. Not in a gay bar. Not your Tony, what well, do you now order I know... in the bar? Well, now I know why every single bartender in my entire existence is always sizing me up. They look at me funny because I order Malibu and Coke. Uh, you don't oh, even want to be Tony, drunk. we have to ah! talk, Bob. You want to figure that out, baby. You're a lesbian. <laughs> well, what are I you am. drinking? I, no, I, I, no, no, I've you're a 20 year old girl. I've been a lesbian before. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, yeah. So, so I don't think my drink was in there completely. Like, there was the Malibu with pineapple, which I would never drink. Yeah, all of a sudden, that's been. Yeah, I was. <laughs> we could all see it on your face. Uh, exactly, we okay. saw the lie as you told it. By the way, yeah. only on a cruise. Only on a cruise with a little umbrella. Only How, while when you were when you were out in the bar scene, besides uh, the drug, uh, your drug friends, uh, did you have a drink of choice? And I didn't. I didn't. I, drinking wasn't really my thing. I've never in my entire life gotten drunk. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. and good I've, for you. Yeah, I've never, I don't know what it's like to, to be drunk. Hi, yes, drunk, no. So um, I didn't really have a, a drink. Anytime I would drink anything, it might be if somebody just brings whatever back to the dressing room and I'll just, you know, just to be part of the in crowd, take a shot or whatever, but I really don't have Yeah. You know, I used to bartend on South Beach back in the 90s. And so, like, the girls would always come on, on vacation from New York or whatever. Can I have a sex on the beach? Can I have a sex on the beach? And it's like, you know, that is like an instant hangover the next day. It's pure uh -huh. sugar. All, you know, it's peach snaps and it's vodka and it's orange and cranberry. And you are, like, 
a mess and a couple of you know drinks. And then you'd always get that girl that's like, make me something, surprise me. And I'm like, okay, I'll surprise you. So I'll grab some Baileys and some lime juice and put it together. <laughs> that curdles in their mouth. They don't like that. <laughs> they don't like that. Well. <laughs> you know, you that's know, awful. Uh, 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 one of the things that I think is interesting about this is uh, it's happening out for two and a half years. We've really pursued gay culture, our community, in so many different ways. And uh, at Donny Ani kind of really focuses on something that we've never talked about before. Our bartenders in our LGBT institutions are sizing us up. Cheap. And we're not prick. even thinking about it, but they're going, oh, I know what you are, who you are, <laughs> or... What are you Does that surprise y'all that that's Not at all. going on behind the scenes? Not really. No. No? So you think as people come up and order a drink, the bartender's like bottom, top, yes. bottom. Yes. Waiters do bottom. it too. Absolutely. Not just bartenders. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting constantly with my Balabu and Coke. Bottom, bottom, bottom. <laughs> What are you going to do? Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> that, and they're probably going, this is the one that's not going to tip me. I, this yeah. is the one that oh, is going to yeah, tip Yeah, yeah. I have a very good friend that is a, is a server, and he can tell you instantaneously in the first minute, uh, regardless of great service of how much or not make. good service, exactly how much he's going to get yep. from the person. He can do it in the first minute. <laughs> I'm so impressed when they can do it. And by the way, I'm never ordering a martini again. I love martinis. But the life alert joke just falls too close. Put it on the oh, rock this time. Put it on the I'm rock. I'm just telling you. <laughs> and and just I have that. never, ever, ever uh, gone to uh, uh, Johnson's, the strip club on Wilton Drive and pulled out and tipped via a social security check. I have never done I think that it, in my entire life. The, in, well, the amount not deposited to you. Not the actual check. It's how much <laughs> yes. money you're giving your entire yes. paycheck. Yes. I, yes, I'm, I'm with Mr. on that. I think that's what he meant. <laughs> Here's all my money, yeah. dancer. Take it all. Uh, right. now, now, <laughs> now, that, now, that we've now that we've clarified that for you, Al, now can you, are you going to still stick with that statement? Yeah. <laughs> Look yeah, at his face. Shut up, all of you. All right. He's all speechless. Let's move on. Let's, <laughs> I am kind of speechless, actually. All right. Let's, let's do some other uh, big headlines. Let's do it, however, as a lightning round. There's lots of silly, but also there's lots of important headlines in the news this week. Let's discuss them in our segment we call Save by the Bell. But there's a twist. Uh, we are only going to discuss each one of these topics for just one minute. At the end of the one minute, you're going to hear this bell again. And then you've got to stop no matter where you are in your sentence. And we move on. Everybody understand? Got it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Well, there are only tops or only bottoms. Did y'all know that? We've discussed that. That's and not it's true. happening out. Man. Probably no. not. At least that's what many in the LGBTQ community suggest. So it's been a hot topic this week in Reddit. Save by the Bell headline number one. Why do so many, some and so many gays, insist nobody is versatile? Gender is a spectrum. Sexuality is a spectrum. Of course, sexual orientation position is also a spectrum. I am a bottom, period. I am married to a top only, which is works out perfect for me. Uh, but I have topped because supply and demand, and if they demanded it, I have supplied it in the past. And that's talking about you. Yes, but the, girl. The, the argument, uh, or at least the conversation is Reddit, it, it is oh. so many people argue it doesn't even exist. Yeah, exist. because internalized self-hatred is a thing in the gay community. Mm -hmm. We have True. this whole belief that if Facts. you're a top you have to be more masculine you're the butch one if you're a bottom you have to be more feminine you have to be this you have to be that it's heteronormative bullshit the more masculine you look the more of a bottom you are i think that's usually true i agree with misty i agree with misty completely but the funny thing is like i'm i'm the guy that's still out there as you all know <laughs> looking for a guy all right like i want to date i'm trying to date although as misty said a couple of weeks back i'm oh, going Lord. through some kind of dry spell right but the reality is that when i go on these apps like whether it's tinder or whether it's um growler for the bears of course um that's the first thing that you see on people's like description that's the first thing you see it's like bottom 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 and seldom do you see anyone actually say that they're a top or versatile. Like I am completely versatile. Compl I have I I am not one of these like macho Cuban guys that has to be like a poppy top, 
cafe. I said that for you, El Papi Top. <laughs> but it's the truth. You might not it's have the heard truth. It. All right. Well, uh, next up, Grinder does a survey, and surprising, they found a majority are hooking up exclusively online. That means virtual. A significant percentage are having sex with a mask on if they are coupling uh, together. And a majority of us reflected that they are more interested than in pre-pandemic in solid relationships. So Saved by the Bell headline number two, Grindr polls 10,000 users about love, sex during the pandemic, and lots of the findings surprise normatives. What do you all think? I'm not surprised because I spend a lot of time in virtual reality. And there's a phenomenon in, in virtual reality called ERP, which stands for electronic role play. So people go into VR and they role play whatever they want to do. And you know, in VR, you can be any avatar you want to be, you can be in any world you want to be, it can be any situation. So I see it quite often, and I don't think it's surprising that there's people doing more things virtually. Either. Or that they want to. We have could a all learn. We could all learn so much from Gordon. Like whenever you say anything, Gordon, I'm like, "What? That's a thing. What is That's that? Amazing. Say it again. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying buy a VR headset. Get it. Like it's the future. It oh, really I'm, is. I'm gonna call and you and find out. Yeah. A VR headset. And lube. <laughs> Any other thoughts on the grinder report? I think it's awesome. I think I applaud the people. Uh, you have to really want to hook up with somebody in, in, during a pandemic. Oh, yeah. Talk about safe sex. I mean, you're hooking up with somebody while wearing a mask. Cool. Yeah. 35% said they were hooking up through pandemic, uh, but a majority said that they were doing so with a mask. Uh, wow. They lied. <laughs> Why kiss a booty call? You don't got to kiss right. a booty call. Florida wants your LGBTQ tourism money no matter what. Or do they? Hmm. Saved by the Bell headline number three. Local Florida officials are warning spring breakers, we're right in the cusp of it now, to stay away from Miami and go to Vegas if they don't plan on following our new rules in pandemic. Nobody listens. Okay, they, they said even... the same thing last year. It doesn't matter. South Beach is a freaking mess. The last month, it's already started. It is a hot mess. What's going on? Uh, what's going on over there? And they've gotten more police and everything, but it doesn't matter. It's too many people there. They don't enforce anything. And no one's wearing a mask. No one is Nobody. wearing a mask. I was there on Sunday. No one is wearing a mask. I see it all over it's Facebook. It's really scary. It really sucks because I used to live in Miami and most of the people that live there don't really want to deal with these spring breakers at all because like last year there was a whole bunch of them brawling in the middle of the street so it, I just see it Miami's becoming increasingly more hostile to tourists in general so. it's, it's reverse psychology hey look everyone we have all these rules let your kids come here also we don't enforce any of these rules like my wife works at an urgent care Good she point. says that a million people from like new york will be there getting covid testing before they go back home so they come down here a party and then they go back home with that it's nuts mm. crazy one more stupid cheeto story from our south florida neighbor <laughs> saved by the bell number four mm -hmm. wtf Trump, Malone, oh, Lord. were vaccinated for COVID at the White House in January, and they I never heard that. told anyone. Why is that shocking? Does it he got out of COVID right, right. three times okay. a day for like a year. Yeah, why so, are you shocked, Al? And so it here's, good the, here's the thing. Why are we here's surprised? Go ahead, Power. Go ahead, Power. Go ahead. Go ahead. So here's, here's the thing that I find interesting about this is that the same man who downplayed and dismissed and denied oh, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic and said it was a hoax and has all his idiot followers running around saying that the vaccine isn't good, uh, COVID is a hoax, this and, but he goes and secretly gets vaccinated. So basically what he's saying is, I'm going to be all right and I'm going to take this, but y'all dummies can go ahead and um, right. say that it's not real and drop dead. Y'all drink the juice, but I'm not that? drinking. And it uh -huh. wouldn't be good right, for his right, narrative exactly. that he's selling if he was public about getting a vaccine because his whole thing is it's Absolutely. just the flu and anybody can survive That's right. it. That makes sense. That's right. Nobody's really he dying. Got a, <laughs> but I'm going to protect myself just in case. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I, I swear to God, that man. every time, it's like this picture, when I see his picture, I am revulsed on anything. Makes me see I can't stand his <laughs> shit eating <laughs> brain. I, I don't want to look at his right. shit eating yeah, brain. I still want to sleep with right. Melania, so I don't on. know. When is she divorcing him? Now, <laughs> practice. Being in a gold digger. <laughs> when is that? When is that wait, wait, wait. Off? I'm moving on. <laughs> Malpractice still runs wild. Saved by the Bell, headline number five. So uh, this plastic surgeon, huh? he logged into traffic court via Zoom while operating on a patient. Not what I need to see before surgery Monday, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Now. I was just gonna say. Not Thank what you. I see. And look, and you have to see this video, guys. Like literally, yeah. the judge is like, um, "Can we? Should we reschedule?" And the surgeon's like, "No, Was no, this no. In Florida? I'm good. Just so we know. I'm good. I got no, I this. Think Don't it's worry." Or Washington. Free interview Monday is. Uh, do you have any court appearances today, uh, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> this dude should seriously lose his license, though, because this is a huge HIPAA violation. The point of HIPAA is that the identity of a patient is private. It's oh, they didn't see the well, I don't think they, they disclosed the, the patient's, patient's but identity. But this video is happening in a public proceeding. It's public record. But he be devil's on advocate, the patient? he could, this could be something he's doing routinely with his eyes closed. It's not a distraction. Wait, I don't is know. Is HIPAA violation the greatest concern that you have yeah. here? Not the I don't even think it was violated. <laughs> not the potential mistake. He's probably got a scalpel in his hand. <laughs> No, because I could tell you about a client. I just can't say their name. The client's name right. was never mentioned. And their face was never Wait, shown. Wait, we're talking about the doctor being distracted by the judge and the other attorney or the other yeah, representative. Uh, the audacity. I, would, I don't know. But I, would I, don't know. I would definitely say that's the, that's the greater. <laughs> that's the greater. Probably not the best use of your time. <laughs> well, it seems to me. All right. QAnon's queen. I've self-appointed her, by the way. QAnon's queen from Georgia hung a sign in our Capitol office, oh or Lord. in her Capitol office, I should say, in our <laughs> Capitol, story. but at her Capitol office in the hallway this week, saying there are only two genders, male, female, what? full stop. Saved by the Bell, headline number six. Marjorie Taylor Greene antagonizes all of her Democratic colleagues with her anti-transgender sign. Your ignorance is showing, ma'am. <laughs> One in 500 people have XXY chromosomes. What gender are they? Oh, Marjorie, I have yeah. a friend of mine that's going to make a little voodoo doll of you, and I'm just going to poke it with, like, pins and stuff <laughs> for the next week, okay? I'll, I'll, you, I'll send you my nail so you can poke it. I, I find it interesting <laughs> that she's the same. She hung the sign that said there are two genders, male and female. Trust the science. Now, this is the same bitch that uh, is talking about trust the science, but yet talking about Jewish lasers, right? Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to me. You know, you believe in, in uh, Jewish space laser, but you're talking about trust the science. What type of science do you believe Hence why I call her the QAnon. How do these Tony, people get in office say, is my first Tony, question. Me help push you in. What were you going to say? Oh, I appreciate that. No, I was just, just going to say, like, this woman is so unnecessary. And we all continue to give her a platform by showing all of her stupidity. I feel like we need to start ignoring her, ignoring the boycott. Cheeto and everybody <laughs> else. Gonna yes, do that. let's boycott them. They're not going to do that because they need something to replace Trump. Mm. That's good for That's race. an interesting observation. All right. Uh, Jamaica loses cases on murder of the LGBTQ leader of J Flag and Jamaica's discrimination policies with the Organization of American States. First time ever of a ruling like this. Saved by the Bell, headline number seven. The OAS, the Organization of American States Commission, issues a landmark ruling against Jamaica's sodomy law, saying it must be reversed. Wow, that's mm, ain't no ain't no ain't no wow. Uh, that's just how how it is. Uh, you know, full disclosure. I'm I'm Jamaican. I'm part Jamaican. My father's Jamaican. Um, what part? <laughs> Kingston. Well, no, I was I was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was um, yeah, my part. father's Jamaican, and my mother's from Trinidad and Tobago. As am I. Jamaica, um, and and actually Trinidad and Tobago, my home country, have have some of the toughest, most anti LGBT. Um, laws. They are, you can actually get chopped up with a machete in those islands for being gay. That's why I do not go there. I do not visit there. Jamaica to me is not something that I consider a vacation. And I discourage people from giving their money to, uh, to Jamaica until they change their rules.
Does anybody know the legal precedent of this? Like if they're actually going to have to do anything? Because the UN does stuff like this all the time and it doesn't really mean anything. Isn't it still illegal to have sodomy in Oklahoma? In uh, this, this country? Is, this is different. They have a law in the books that they yeah. can enforce in Jamaica. You can't enforce it. If, it. if it exists, Florida, you still can't get married. That law is still on the books, but it's not enforceable. In Jamaica, that's a, it's a different situation. You. It can be enforced. But it has nothing to do with religion, guys. Yeah, exactly. No. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's move out of uh, Saved by the Bell. Uh, finally, tonight, we are the LGBTQ community. You probably figured that out watching tonight. Surprise. What's happening out. <laughs> so I'm not a woman. Let's have sex <laughs> I am. relationships. Let's play another game. Our game asks, who would you do, why you do it, and what would you do to three different interesting people? And tonight, our game is Shag Mary Chop. Our theme tonight is the National Task Force Winter Party Festival. It's this weekend. It's March 4 through 6, and it's completely being digital. Uh, it has some of the most famous DJs in the world, which you are seeing here. So we are going to play with DJ Abel, and then we're going to play with DJ Dan Slater from Australia. Wipe your mouth out. And last, but yeah. not least, <laughs> I just started drooling. DJ Joe Guthrow. So let's play Shag, Mary, Chop. How come and only one has his shirt off in this? We are... Uh, <laughs> That's not fair. Great answer. All right. Let's start with Power. Power, you're in the, uh, in the DJ industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine you've run uh, across uh, all three of these channels. Run across. Run across. I'm friends with all three of them. The last... The last um, time I worked, which was last year, Winter Party, I worked um, with Dan Slater and, and hung out with him um, that weekend um, at, a, at an event that I hosted. Joe Guthrow, I've known him for years, even before I started DJing. And Abel, of course, is my, uh, is my closest friend out of the three. And Abel actually was the, was the one that came and gave me my first set of headphones when I started DJing. He drove... From Kendall to my apartment in South Beach and gave me my first set of headphones. That's love. So this is very, very hard for me. So I have figured this out. And I just want to share, um, just for our audience, we actually got to know um, about who these um, are, say, our uh, chop Mary, uh, Shag Mary Chop was a couple days in advance, and I'm glad that our production let us know because I needed some time to figure this out. This was hard. <laughs> the I, mathematical I, equations. I, I, did, I actually, I actually texted Abel and I told him, "Girl, you are going to be on our show for Shag Mary Chop." He texted me back, "Roll on the, roll on the floor, laughing my ass off." What time? I told him, it'll be, "You know, it'll be at eight. The segment is always the last." And he said, and I'm quoting here for all y'all other panelists, LOL, I will cut a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Power <laughs> Infinity, said, if for the first time in two and a half years, is lobbying for <laughs> one of the Shag Mary Chow. Oh my God. Please, he said, so please take it easy on me. So here, here it goes. Right. We love I it. Am, Absolutely. I am, going to, I am going to change the game up a little bit, and I am going to actually shag DJ Dan Slater. And I will shag Joe Guthrow. I'm not chopping any one of them. There's no way in hell I'm chopping any one of them. So I'm going to shag Dan Slater and Joe Guthrow. And of course, I'm going to marry my longtime friend, my brister, my partner in crime, uh, the icon, Abel, because I know that he has songs back a lack of Bart Darling. And between him and I, the shows, the music, you would have a dynamic duo right there. So okay. There now, now, because I'm the Nancy Pelosi of It's Happening Out, I'm implementing an immediate rule, oh, a rule change to say you do not have to play this game tonight uh, of selecting just one shag, just one Mary, just one chop, which is what Power just did, just as long as you've been on every It's Happening Out since September, 13, uh, September 20th, <laughs> 2019. If you meet those rules, you can do the exact same thing. Um, now, right. let's move on. I Abel, we love you too. And Slater. And I Gun did eight Ross. months. Tony Lima, who are you shagging? So, since you just pelosi the rules, <laughs> let's see. Um, I think I think I would I would absolutely shag Dan Slater 
I would marry Abel. I'm also friends with Abel. I've been listening to Abel since I was a kid, and he was on Super Q in Miami, like doing all sorts of disco and freestyle. Yeah, and I will love him forever. He is one of he is one of the the most wonderful men I've ever met. He's iconic, as Power says. So I would absolutely, and he's adorable. He's a little bear. He's hairy. He's got his little beard going. I would marry him for sure. And so Joe. then I would have to, I would have to just chop Joe. Although I don't. I mean, I've heard him spin before, but I don't have. Are you sure that I can't just like nope, keep I've him there? Nope. I've below you. In advance, I've so, below no you. It's so a new I'll phrase that I'm going to use from now on. It is happening out. A uh, Rihanna. Patron, who um, are you going to shag? Well, since they all gave the same exact answer, I'm just going to switch it, and I'm going Good to shag you. Abel, Mary Slater, and bye-bye, Joe. Okay, very good. <laughs> and Misty Eyes, who are you going to shag? Uh, Abel's my favorite as well. Um, initially, okay, let's go in looks only. Looking at the picture, duh, Dan Slater, mm -hmm. yum factor down but i would not marry him because i think he would love himself more than he would love anybody else in the world Ooh. and his own reflection cannot be the love of his life so that DJ will not be shade. dj shade <laughs> that will not be a merry relationship end of story for me but i will definitely shag the house down boots right. and joe is adorable but i'm also in love with abel so there's that All i'm going right. to marry go. abel and chop joe and uh Faye, uh who are you gonna uh shag so as you guys know i'm a top <laughs> what the F oh i know it wasn't supposed to be that loud she's wow. a bear she's a top just so, go I'm on gonna shag joe because it seems like he would let me right he's and um i am definitely gonna marry abel um he cut a bitch i cut a bitch we got so much in common man we're gonna have a wonderful right. life together you know and he's like adorable no wait wait this is breaking news right now. For the first time in history in the LGBT community, Dan Slater is getting ready to be... Chopped. Because I have to be the prettiest bitch in bed. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't blame you. I do not. That's the I don't only blame reason. You. All right, great. And our Gen Zer, let's go a little younger and see what happens. Uh, Gordon Woodworth III, who are you shagging? So whenever I get this question, whenever I'm on here, to me, shag is who you're going to shag, but Mary is who you're going to repeatedly shag. Because yeah, that makes sense. hopefully, if you're in a marriage, yeah. there'll be some shagging, right? So obviously, I'm going to shag DJ Slater because look at him. He's attractive. But that's that's the guy you hook up with Once. after. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? Once. You see her in the bar. She's really cute. It whatever. You take her home, and then you never talk to her again. So... <laughs> DJ Pass Slater by. shag. The children. Then, the trick. <laughs> True. We've been there, done He's that. Trained. Who are you Look married? at him. Okay. Married? But I think it's really unfair that the other two gentlemen don't have their shirts off in these photos because <laughs> I definitely did the Googled it to see what they all look like. And Joe without a shirt on is definitely my favorite. I, I mean, we love a muscled body, but, you know, I really like. So it. you're going to marry Joe. Marry Joe. And then it, just by default, Abel gets chopped. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, right. know for damn, I know for damn sure he ain't Google no Abel and saw him with no shirt on. Yeah. Oh, right? No, no. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, Actually oh, okay. Abel, I Abel has some early pictures that are uh, pretty provocative, actually. Oh. Um, uh, but he's yeah. still gorgeous. Yeah, uh, all three of them. But are. also, Joe. And by the way, by the way, as we bring uh, an end to our game, Shag Mary Chop, uh, we remind you, it's super important. Our 501c3s have had taken the hardest hit of anyone in the industry uh, in America, in the LGBTQ uh, industry. It's like our drag queens, etc. We talk about it. Uh, COVID has brought everything to a stop. Um, our advocacy for organizations like the National Task Force are critically important. And this event is critically important in terms of the fundraising efforts. Uh, the Winter uh, Party Festival starts tomorrow night. The first evening is free. Log in at the National uh, Task Force uh, Party uh, tomorrow night and then Friday night's party and Saturday night's party. Uh, the National Task Force and our advocacy in the LGBTQ community has never needed you 
more. The Equality Act is being discussed this week. Catch we the name, the power. Power! The power, exactly. All right. And Tina Burner is hosting on. Shag Mary Chop. Before we end the show, uh, we want to introduce our sponsor tonight. We're going to do a little uh, shot, and production's going to keep up with us. Uh, and we're going to move Faye into the middle because we're going to do the best picture shot of Faye. Is that box continue? Oh, darn it. Well, they got it better than I was, I was thinking. Uh, before we uh, end uh, the show, we're introducing our sponsor, Jets Pizza. Are you coming to South Florida uh, or you have to um, visit? South Florida, uh, make sure you try thick. the pizza of choice here for the LGBT mm. community, and that's so Jets thick. Pizza. Uh, we're all getting like ready to thick. enjoy it here. In fact, it was all I could do, <laughs> like last week, to not have the pizza eaten beforehand. But fortunately for me, Tony Lima is not on set. Oh! Well, that's, that's shitty. it, America. Hey, there's okay. another Italian up here. <laughs> Y'all always trying to come to Missy, that man. Thank, thank you for having my back. Cool. I know. It's okay, Tony. Tony. Tony alone. He, it's okay, Tony. We'll be lucky if he makes it to the end of the show still alive. <laughs> right. All right. Well, that, that's it, America. I didn't have another, to say a thing. <laughs> uh, right. Exactly. And I like it that way. Whoop. All right. Uh, <laughs> another week with the with you and the world's first and most popular LGBTQ talk show in the world. Before we sign off, let's hear from all of our hosts for one final good night. Uh, first up, good night from Power Infinity. Good night, everybody, and shameless plug this weekend for the winter party. Even though I cannot be there in attendance myself, and uh, Kitty Meow make a special appearance um, live stream at a little commercial that we filmed for the winter party. So check that out. Oh. Also, make sure to make sure to um, catch us here every single Wednesday at eight o'clock, right here. It is happening out. Excellent, and a good night from my friend Tony Lima. Good night, everyone. I want to also mention a winter party because I don't know that people realize that the money that comes from winter party goes to the Miami Foundation and then it's redistributed to all of our organizations doing the work here locally. So the task force is not taking the money away to do national work. It's coming back here to Ariana Center, to Equality Florida, to Pride Lines and a series of other organizations that are doing the work here at the local level. So that's really important. Good night, and I'll see you Tuesday, actually Monday and Tuesday night on Q News tonight. Excellent. And uh, good night uh, from Faye what? Faye what? Have a great evening, everyone. I'll be thinking about you guys. Think about me on Monday when I get my surgery. I will be out for a little bit, but I'll be thinking of all of you, and I will be back soon, better than ever. Everything's going to be great for you, Faye. And good night from Rihanna Patron. You know I'm going to plug. Tonight, propaganda uh, for my work show, Work It Wednesdays, each and every Wednesday. And also, this Sunday, Tiki with a Kiki at Salt and Spirits in Boca. Excellent. Peace out. Happy that you're here tonight. And a good night from Gordon Woodworth III. I'm also going to plug, oh, my channel's on there. You can see it if you want to come to Alt Space VR. We have events every week for pagan people. Even if you don't have the money to afford a, a VR headset, it is compatible with PC and Mac, so you can still participate. You just won't be in VR. And lastly, I want to say the spring equinox is at the end of this month, and even if you're not a pagan, it's still a significant time, and it's all about balance. So I hope that we all can try to take some steps in our life to bring balance to ourselves, whether it's mental, physical, relationships, whatever. Just work on your issues. Excellent. And a good night from Misty Eyes. All I'm thinking about is that virtual reality sex that you're going to be having with the Pagan Circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, please donate to my my campaign. It's not my campaign. It's Sunserve's campaign. It's the Florida AIDS Walk. It's AHF. But donate in my name so I can get the applause. Yeah. I live for the applause. Absolutely. And remember, Thank buy you. one, get one free. AHF's generous donation. They you match. support Misty and Sunserve. And they match dollar for dollar. So I ask you, America, is what you watch tonight important to you? You sat right here at the LGBTQ kitchen table right along with us. Uh, remember, if it's important to you, it's happening out. Good night, America. <laughs>